So you all have been, block, or uh, excuse me, you've been siding at home using the method of comparing angles and uh, being able to see how they compare by just by using your finger on your pencil. What we're going to do is we're going to take that and apply it to um, something closer up, this still life. This is what we have set up in class and on the PowerPoint I've given kind of general instructions and I also did four different slides of different views. Now don't use this one because I'm using it for a, an example. I shot it from the top so that I would have a different view and it's not that great. The skull here kind of looks like a, a brain <laughs> but it's a good example and you can pick from any of those four. You pick one of those and um, I want to kind of go through the PowerPoint so that I'm kind of co corresponding with it. So I'm down to where it says format your paper. Okay. So I just drew this one on the one page so I could use it under the camera. It would kind of fit underneath here a little better. But let's say if you had the view that. Um, If you pick the first one, it's on slide three. I would probably do that one horizontally or a landscape. Probably same thing with the second and third. The fourth one is more vertical. So that's just kind of setting up your paper to the direction it's going to go. And then we're going to use, the next slide says, use siding to block in the basic big shapes. Um, so you're really not drawing the objects at this point. What you're doing is reserving a space to draw them because what I've found is that most people are okay drawing what's there it's where it is not what it is that gives you the problem so I can kind of show you here sort of what through my eyes what you see I also want to run this off the edge now what we did in class is kind of mark a spot that because I may not run it all the way to the edge in one direction so if I, like if I get it wide enough here, it may not be quite tall enough. You can trim that later. Sometimes we'll even mark it, but don't do anything permanent. Don't actually trim it until the very end of the project. So what I want to do is kind of look through here and see some things. So when I'm siding, I can see something like this. That the skull is that wide, and it is... I don't want to make it a third. It's a little bit bigger than a third, because if a third would go off, there's a second, the third would go off the image area. But I want to make it a little bigger so that it spreads out. So, um, let's see, if this is a third, then it's probably going to be about right here. So not drawing the skull but just realizing it doesn't go quite to the bottom because I want to include some of the table the skull is going to go kind of right there so all I'm doing is just kind of putting an area to where uh, that's where the skull will go I'm reserving a spot now if I want to kind of figure out some other things I can figure out the base the base of the trophy is a little bit above the skull so if that's about where the skull is the trophy is going to be about right there and I can get the height of the trophy by comparing to something I already have um, do this way. the height of the skull is right here so you can see that the trophy if you go from the very base to the kind of the rim of it is about the same as the skull so I could take this measurement and mark it up here and the rim of the trophy is about that height. Now in this picture it's all kind of aimed sideways, it's tilted a little bit um, and the base is up and to the right so if I put a line kind of like that, that's going to guide me and keep things sort of straight on that line and get the tilt all the way up. I can also use some measurements um, maybe the width of the skull compared to the width of the trophy. Trophy is a little bit wider so if that's about the skull area then the trophy is going to be just a little bit wider and it tapers down so I have to leave a little room for the base 
So I can kind of draw in a shape like that that reserves that spot. I'm also looking at negative spaces. Do I have enough room for the negative space in here? The fish I can kind of put in as an oval. So it comes down, if I look at the angle, it's kind of at that angle. So what I want to do is carry that angle over here. It starts behind the skull and kind of takes up that space right there. Then the little skull, it's at a different angle. It's tilted just like the trophy. And it overlaps the base of the trophy, so it kind of goes right in here. Then this picture, you can, you can tell it's a skull from other views. This image right here is going to go up around here. So on this one, actually, it worked out well because it's actually going off the top of the page. I won't have to trim anything. Um, then I can look at the height of the horn, the width of the horn compared to the trophy. So the horn, the bell end of the horn, the big end, is about as big as the trophy is. So I can take that and measure over here and make it about starting here and there because it goes off the top. Actually, it goes off about, yeah, about right there and to the bottom. And so I'm carrying something off the edge there, which is good. So skull goes off here, the other skull goes off here, into the horn, and then if you look at the line through the trophy compared to the horn, the horn kicks out just a little bit. It's a little bit more angled. So I'll take this and angle it out some. And I'm losing a little bit of image, but again, it's going off the edge. So it's okay. It's actually a good thing to lose some of the image a little bit around the edge so that it fits it. This is what formatting is. It's also called blocking in. So you're just kind of saying, when I do draw this, this is where the trophy and the base will go. The phone will be over here. I've got enough room for the table to run right there. And I get all, kind of get all that angle. So I've got the horn. So really I haven't drawn anything. All I've done is just reserve spots. I've called ahead and got seating for those, those areas. So that when I do the next step, if you go to the next slide, you can see I put a yellow box around it just to show you kind of how I cropped it in a little bit. Now what I do is I start to fine tune things. So there's a good example of what I've done in class up to this point on the next slide. But what I'm doing is just starting to see things like, uh, for example, the trophy, if I started here. I think that's probably in a pretty good spot. And since I'm above it, it's got a curve to it like this. And the trophy kind of flares out and the bottom wraps around it. So it begins to slowly look a little more like a trophy. Instead of just this guideline right here, I can begin to get the curve. And again, this comes from observation. The same way you did with uh, the upside down drawings and the contour drawings. Same thing is happening. Then I can start to kind of indicate that there's a little bit happening here. If I want to look at where it happens, this little curly Q part is right in line with the table. So I find that spot and still not drawing a lot of detail, I'm just indicating where it is. Now the base comes down here and it's kind of small, but it's got this big part around the bottom. So I can begin to add that. If I want to know how wide it is, I can look at it compared to the top part of the vase. It's not quite as wide. It's also an oval, and there's kind of a part there where the stem hooks onto it. That's actually longer if you see it from the side, but from seeing it from the top, it's foreshortened. This is kind of covering up part. Good thing is with your observation, with the siding, you don't have to worry about it. All you do is just draw what you see. Negative spaces become really important too. For example, this spot was really helpful as I was drawing because I've got the edge of the skull, I've got the edge of the base and the trophy, I've got the shadow here where the horn is going back and the edge of the horn. So that spot right there really helped to place things. I also started looking at things um, like the 
chin, for example, if I want to know how far the skull goes down, it goes down just below this corner. So if you know where that corner is, the skull is a little bit taller. And then I can start to round that off. The skull kind of has a top part, has an eye level, then where the teeth go. So it looks a little more like a skull. And you're just little by little kind of doing waves or rounds of things to where you're adding more detail, replacing the blobs that you had with the actual objects. And you're fine tuning, you're changing things a little bit here and there. But what doesn't change is where it goes. You've already got that planned, and so you don't have to worry about it. You already know that your object is going to go in that area. So you're a lot freer to really concentrate on the details and get those put in. And then what you end up with is what's on the, the I think it's the last slide. Let's see. Yes, on the last slide, you've kind of done this. You keep working. You can erase things out little by little. You're cleaning it up. And don't forget that all these lines I'll draw darkly, you're drawing lighter. But the last slide says on the next assignment, we'll begin from this point and we'll add shadows and texture to finish the work. So uh, this grade, this part right here, is just to get it to this point. Just to do the blocking in, like we just did, and then to kind of finesse it to turn these um, areas into the actual object. Start to see the details. And at this point, it is only a contour drawing. Not added any shading, but you've got it, con you've got it, uh, excuse me, formatted. And you've got the contour lines to tell you where things are. Sometimes I even start drawing in reflections and shadows, just the outlines to kind of get ahead of the game just a little bit. So, so it starts to become much more of a, uh, drawing and much less of a sketch and then this would keep going I wouldn't call this one finished yet um, but I'm kind of working in, in real time I don't have one of these finished but I will have that on the next video so what you want to get to in the time frame that's mentioned on this canvas is to this point here this is on 12 by 18 paper blank drawing paper and you can get that in the front office so just stop by any time and pick that up. Don't forget too, if you haven't picked up your art kit, there were several left up there. Um, let me know. I've taken some back to the classroom, but if uh, you need yours, just email me and I'll make sure that it's up there waiting on you. But make sure you pick up this paper, maybe pick up several sheets so that you can have those if you mess up or you can use them for the next assignment. And then have this waiting and the next assignment you see on Canvas will be part two, adding in the shading and textures and finishing this up.